Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear learners, I extend a very warm welcome to you in this course on Sociology of Sanitation. This is the second lecture which is based on sanitation in India historical background in the series of 10 lectures. Yesterday, we discussed the first lecture in that we focused on the concept of sanitation, the emergence of sociology of sanitation, relevance of sociology of sanitation in the field of social science and how can it be useful for our day to day life and how can we play our role in developing society. Today this second lecture will be focused on historical background means before understanding anything it is necessary for us to know what was there in our traditional Indian society. What can we get from our past? what are there in the society, the socio-cultural things prevalent in our society. So, in today's course, we will focus on all those aspects one by one. In 1955, in the presidential address of Indian Sociological Society's conference, D. P. Mukherjee suggested Indian sociologists to concentrate on the study of traditions of the country as foremost part. It means we in the background of those who are having background of social science or sociology should also concentrate on understanding our traditional knowledge. There is a debate going on in social sciences between book view and field view, which is also known as textual view and contextual view. And fortunately, in sociology of sanitation, we will use both textual view and contextual view. What we get from the texts and Indological study is the best example of textual view. In Indological study, we try to get some feedback from the society or the culture, norms, patterns prevalent in our Indian society. That was based on the traditional text that is part of the Indological study. At the same time, when we do the field work, when we get the empirical data, we enter the field, we collect the data from the field, then we get the contextual view that is the real picture of the society. And if we are having both the things, then we can say that well, this is the reality based on my empirical study and this is based on our past also. While discussing sociology of sanitation from contextual view and textual view, it is necessary to focus on all these things. As we all know that sanitation has been part of the Indian tradition and system since long. It is not like that recently we have realized the importance of sanitation. Sanitation plays important role in almost all the culture. Every society has its typical beliefs, pattern, system associated to sanitation. In our day to day life, certain things, the religious aspects, all these things are part of. Of course, it may vary according to place and place, society to society and time to time, but no society is immune to any aspects related to sanitation. In India, cleanliness was considered as next to godliness cleanliness was important part of Indian society. Indian traditional value pays sufficient attention to cleanliness. But let me tell you here that cleanliness does not mean simply external cleanliness. Of course, when in Indian cultural ethos, when keeping in mind the Indian traditional values, we say cleanliness, it focuses on external cleanliness at the same time internal cleanliness, 
normally when we say that sanitation or these days people they are focusing on concentrating on the types of cleanliness that is related to external cleanliness what is clearly visible if any garbage is thrown or we uh, dispose of any wrapper that all these things are part of the external cleanliness but traditional indian society equally focuses on internal cleanliness also because unless until we are clean our mind is clean soul is clean how can we think of any external cleanliness it is not possible so when we say about the yoga yoga is of course the combination of mind soul and body the same way our surroundings should be clean equally important thing is that inner part of our body should also be clean so our thoughts should also be clean so traditional ethos or traditional system of indian society goes beyond the simple thing of that well uh, my surrounding is good or not so in that context we should also un understand that internal cleanliness and external cleanliness both are equally important and in traditionally our ancient people or in our day to day life through the hair say and other stories we come across number of things related to our society where people used to equally focus on the internal and external cleanliness and it is advised in the yajurved also and i quote do not disturb the sky and do not pollute the atmosphere so you can easily understand that we talk about that do not pollute it means not simply that do not throw your wrapper your nearby but it goes beyond that it in it includes number of other things when it says that do not disturb the sky it means it talks about the totality that was advised given in the yajurved in the same way another advice is given in the manusmriti it says and i quote let him not throw urine or feces into the water nor saliva nor clothes defiled by impure substances nor any other impurity nor blood nor poisonous things unquote so when such things are advised by manusmriti or yajurved and a number of other things we can easily understand that traditional system our uh, prevalent system in the society that was more compared to today what we think of cleanliness in our nearby areas or our surroundings it was not limited to that we all are habituated of saying or we all heard the particular quote that is vasudhaiv kutumbakam it is not simply related to when we say that vasudhaiv kutumbakam the whole universe is one family when we say that whole universe doesn't mean the individual is staying on this earth when we say that all those they are part of in this context all doesn't mean simply the human being but of course the plants sea sky earth and includes everything which is part of this universe so we can just understand or you just imagine that when we say that vasudhaiv kutumbakam it goes beyond that simply that we are not simply inclined towards or we are not simply sticking to the individuals or welfare of the individuals but our perception our outlook should be that much broader that we should also think about the welfare of other people or those who are there on this planet so in this context our traditional values teach us that type of lesson there is another work that is renowned work that is yoga sutras of patanjali in the yoga sutras of patanjali in its commandments towards self realization it is said and i quote purity contentment austerity self study and self surrender constitute the woes of observance unquote it clearly suggests that sanitation health and society these are interrelated whenever we think of society we cannot ignore the surroundings 
whenever we think of environment, we cannot ignore the prevalent system in the society. Whenever we talk about the health, we cannot simply concentrate on outer things. So, the statement clearly hints at interconnectedness between society, environment, surroundings and other related things. If we go beyond that, the traditional suggestions given by other, based on the historical facts, Chanakya clearly writes in Arthasastra that sanitation plays important role in every society and even in Arthasastra for the smooth running of the society, he suggests certain even punishments means it is not like that as socialization part, we suggest our children or others that do not do that. And do's and do not's were clearly prevalent even during that period. And that is why in Chanakya's earth sas, it is clearly written that well, these are the different punishments if people they do not stick to the norms, patterns related to sanitation, he or she will be punished in that particular way. At the same time, he advises number of other things that by following these a swast and a swast samaj can be maintained. So, even during the Chanakya's Arthasas, it is clearly mentioned that healthy society, sanitation, hygiene, these used to play important role in social life. And as we all know that we affectionately call Bharat as Bharat Mata. So, those who are part of that Bharat Mata, those who are part of that earth, it is our moral responsibility to protect each and every one, whether it is individual, whether it is any tree, plant, river or any other source of water, if we will not maintain that. So, it is not like that we are today talking about the sewage system, talking about the drainage, talking about the toilet facility, talking about open defecation, these things are new and suddenly we are wake up and we start thinking about all these things, of course not. These things were well there in different period and our ancestors, our forefathers were very much interested in suggesting their children, suggesting their students, suggesting their other fellow mates to follow or to remain conscious about do's and don'ts related to that because their society was so interrelated, we cannot think of environment in a compartmentalized form. We cannot think of any health aspect of individual in a compartmentalized form. If we go by one aspect, it may affect another aspect. So, it is better to think in totality that well, if we keep on protecting earth, keep on protecting water, keep on protecting other things, everything will be remained protected. So, that vast idea was there even during Chanakya's earth sas. If we take examples from the Indus Valley civilization or pure historical facts, then during Indus Valley civilization also a proper town planning was there. Harappa, Lothal, Mohenjodro are the three of the extensive archaeological excavations in the region of Indus Valley civilization. They are noted for sophisticated public works that included sewage, drainage system, public wells and private and public baths. It means even during the historical facts related to Indus Valley civilization, they were also aware. Simple difference is that during historical period, there was gap based on the higher or lower group that certain things were only for people belonging to higher group. All such facilities may or may not be available for the lower group. That difference we can easily find in the historical facts. But so far as civil system, drainage system, even in the ruins of Nalanda, we can find the proper sewage system that is clearly visible even today, anyone can observe that. It means it is not like that, that after development of science and technology, we have started realizing that yes, these things are important, but the sewage system, drainage system or how to the rain harvesting system, it is not like that this is new concept. Rain harvesting was there and number of uh, the archaeological sites 
you can easily observe that yes, these things were already there. So, we are very rich so far as our tradition and historical background is concerned. Simple thing is that we have to realize, we, we are yet to realize the importance of our historical facts. We can get few things from our past. It is not like that we have to start afresh anew, but when we talk about all those historical facts, we can easily get those things and on that basis we can frame, we can maintain, we can tell our children that yes, it is part of our tradition. Simply we have to stick to all those things. Even after the arrival of the father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi, even he was very much conscious about sanitation. He paid sufficient attention to sanitation and above all, he started using himself as part of that there should not be any discrimination based on sanitation. And he goes to the extent that for Mahatma Gandhi, sanitation or cleanliness was more important than independence. And he says, and I quote regarding the his importance, his giving more importance to toilet, sanitation and other facilities more than the independence, he says and I quote, unless we rid ourselves to our dirty habits and have improved latrines, Swaraj can have no value for us. With this statement, we can easily understand that how far it was treated. So, it is not like that, that today we have realized the importance, but earlier also and the great personalities like Mahatma Gandhi, he focused more on latrine and sanitation and you can understand that even today, it is a matter of shame if we talk about latrine, toilet, uh, open defecation, we hesitate in using such words. But simply by ignoring these terms that well, we will detach ourselves from these small words, we cannot do anything for the society. These things are not dirty, these words are not dirty, because it is part and parcel of our day to day life. If we pay sufficient attention, equal attention, those who are doing any profession, we cannot, we should not categorize them good or bad, because those who are in the involved in making the society clean, those who are doing the home uh, clean, they are equally contributing to the society or to the welfare of the family. So, there should not be any hesitation in using such words and doing the job the related to sanitation, latrine, etcetera at our own level. We, if we start thinking about from our own angle, the traditional things related to sanitation, we will find a number of things in prevalent in our own society. Simply, we have to use the glass, we have to sit with our grandmothers and grandparents, they can easily tell you number of things which you may find ok. This we are studying today in my book or on uh, other sources of media, well it was part of our system. You may not be aware certain things which are already there in your different culture, different part, different system, which you will sit with your senior male members of your family, you can easily understand. And from that angle, COVID-19 played important role in making us aware regarding our traditional values, system, etc. You may realize that immediately after the COVID-19, we start talking about certain things which were already there, but we were not able to realize that ok, this is our traditional value, this is our traditional thing. You might have heard one common proverb, prevention is better than cure, prevention is better than cure. Of course, it is not like that, we keep on focusing on it through our nature, through our cultural traits, through our personality traits, through socialization process, we have been learning different do's and don'ts in every society, every family. For example, washing hands, it was very popular during the COVID-19. Do you all think that it was not part of your lesson through your parents, through your grandparents, parents, 
that wash your hands before taking food. It is not like that. It is the gift of the COVID-19 that we start realizing that well washing hands before taking food is a good habit. It is part of our, you may belong to any culture, any society, any religion, any group, anywhere, but in every society it is suggested. Same when you worship the God, it is not like that you can worship the God in any way, but the concept of purity and impurity is already there in every society and even other parts we have been knowing that well certain things are pure, certain things are impure. So, it is not like that, that purity and impurity is not part of there. Even those who are students of sociology, they easily, they are aware with the name of Emil Durkheim. The one of the founding fathers, Emil Durkheim, he is also talking about sacred and profane, sacred and profane. In other words, it is related to certain things which are sacred which are paid sufficient respect and certain things which are related not as pure as the sacred. So, in sociology of sanitation, we can understand it that it is movement from profane to sacred. It is move, if you move from profane to sacred in Darkheimian term, it will be like sociology of sanitation. Because when we think of in our society that there is clear cut compartmentalization that well, these are the do's and don'ts related to sacred things. These are the do's and don'ts related to profane things. But that does not mean that we can totally ignore the profane things. Of course not. It is part of. Simple thing is that when we say that purity, impurity in Indian society, it simply says that certain things are not as pure as others. This differentiation, this categorization of purity, impurity or which is good for sanitation or which is bad for sanitation, that does not mean that we should keep ourselves detached from all those things. We cannot, for example, toilet is considered not as sacred part, but can we ignore the toilet? Of course not. The same way when we are taking food, when you are discarding particular things, we cannot ignore them. Simple meaning is that we have to maintain the balance that well, these things are part and parcel of our life. How to maintain our life? So, in the same way we are staying with sacred thing, same way we are staying with the profane thing, same way we are staying with pure and impure. So, maintaining the balance between purity and impurity, that is how we can sustain our life. And during COVID-19, number of habits we start realizing and during those days, you all are aware today in everywhere you will find that it is related to the term Ayurveda or anything which is related to herbal. It is not like that we start realizing the importance, importance of for example, certain trees and plants. You all are aware with the uh, holy importance or uh, the environmental point of view or herbal importance of certain plants. For example, Tulsi, it is planted everywhere. The it is important not only for health, but from religious angle also. So, certain trees like neem, people, bargad, banyan tree, etc., these things are part of our traditional system. And as we all know that if such trees are planted, are there in any area, the whole atmosphere is purified. We are not supposed to spread any other chemicals to maintain the balance. But when we are fortunate that we are having such trees, we can maintain that, we can protect such trees, not only simply to maintain our health, but to protect this environment. And in that way, if we focus on such trees, such plants and other things, we can protect the whole society. And that is why a number of things are there. You all are aware in different parts of India, whether in South India or in Bihar, in North India and in Mithila, you will find number of things related to such thing. For example, taking food on banana leaves. Simply when people they take food on banana leaves, it is part of the tradition. When people take food on that, we uh, wash the particular area. At the same time, cleaning particular area with cow dung or gober. 
that is even today scientifically proved. It was part of our system that we clean our house with that cow dung or gober. That is today it is considered okay, it is good, but try to understand it was part of our tradition and number of things are already there in our system through which we should learn that okay, if that suggestion is given by our tradition, what can be done? It means that well that is already there in your system. Simple thing is that you have to realize, realize that okay, that interconnectedness is already given, but it is not directly suggested that well this is the cause effect relationship, but our forefathers were so smart that instead of directly saying that well if you do that it will be result because certain things have long lasting effects. So, if we protect particular tree the importance of neem, importance of tulsi that is there you just plant it was said that well it is from religious angle or certain rituals are there. These rituals are simply suggestive of the fact that you should do the worship from religious angle also, but it is there that you should protect the particular gift of the nature. For example, in particular parts, Bhatsavitri is there. Of course, that Bhatsavitri in that the married women, they worship the banyan tree. Simple example is that it is associated to particular ritual called Bhatsavitri, but it is simply that we protect the particular banyan tree tree, the Bhargad tree. It means it is related to that, that in that particular way we are not only protecting the system, but we are protecting the particular aspect of society also. You are all aware there is one ritual, one festival called Chhat Puja. In Chhat, it is there in the water. So, it is not simply related that we are worshipping water. Just try to understand in Chhat Puja, God Shuri or sun is being worshipped. So, that is part of the nature, the sun. Another is part of the water, whether in river or pond, whatever you are doing. These two are part of the nature and it is related to, related to human health. And as it is said that just to protect God Shuri, God sun protects our body. He is the owner of the body. Now, try to understand the sun, the water and the welfare of the body or the goodness of the body. This triangle, it is part of the system, part of the ritual, but when it is suggested, you can easily understand that how our forefathers, they were so much aware regarding the environment, regarding our health, regarding protection of this planet or the earth. So, we are supposed to simply highlight all these things because unless until we know the importance of all these things, how can we understand? And it was not like that only during COVID-19 we were aware, we realized that okay, greetings other like the as the pranam, not making, uh, shaking hands or washing hands before taking food, it was part of even in almost every religion when you start worshipping God we are supposed to wash our hands, water, wash our feet or in certain religion you are supposed to take bath before performing any puja, before performing any rituals. So, cleaning of body, cleaning of body is part and parcel of the society. It is simply related to that it is attached to different function, different ritual, then we realize that well we are supposed to. If we imbibe all these things in our personality traits, it is not like that it will be helpful for us that yes, what we are doing that is good. But other than that, we will be helping our society. Nowadays, you all have observed that taking tea in Kulhar is very popular. Now, try to understand we are not only protecting our environment by the plastic cups but we are helping those who are involved in making that kulha, so that we are helping others, we are helping ourselves, we are helping the environment. A number of things are there, we are realizing different paintings, different other things in every area. 
we celebrate the nature also. We all are aware there are number of rituals, for example, during the harvest period, during the northeast, the Bihu is celebrated. That is, it is when we talk about the harvest festival or the crops, we associate ourselves with the crops or the nature and in our day to day life. In, in different paintings, you will also find that nature is giving priority. You all are aware with the importance of Mithila painting. You will find in Mithila painting the different plants, different trees, the fish and other natural things are there in that particular way. Even the Mithila painting is so close to the nature that earlier it used to be on the cow dung that gober. Even today it is in new form it is the gober Mithila painting is there. Here you can easily understand the importance of cow dung, the gober, then the Mithila painting and then the nature, the particular plants, particular trees and animals depicted through the Mithila painting. So, when we say that we are displaying to others that well we should follow particular culture, so we should take lesson from such paintings when we offer others to take food, we offer before that a glass of water to wash their hands. So, it is part of our culture, we should simply stick to our culture, we should not forget after the arrival of the LPG factor, liberalization, privatization, globalization, we should indulge ourselves or we should adjust ourselves to all those cultural things. Sometimes we may find that these things may not be useful for us in the long run. For sustainability, now everyone is talking about the sustainable development. We all know that our traditional values, ethos and cultural are so much related to sustainability because when you stick to the norms, patterns, values prevalent in the society, you will find or take all these examples which are there. You will find for example, when you are taking food on banana leaf, you will not find that it is going to harm the environment, it is going to harm others but it is useful for your food also when you are taking the uh, other medicine, when you are taking the any herbs, when you are already certain plants are there. If you recognize that well, this particular plant, this particular tree, this particular leaves of particular tree is useful for my health. You will protect that plant, you will protect that tree, in that way you are protecting environment, in that way you are protecting your health, in that way you are creating, giving message to others that well you should protect. So, we should also that we have learnt a number of things and in different columns uh, or you have might have heard that those who are getting the benefit of interacting with their grandparents and uh, grandmothers or grandfathers, they know the importance of all these things. You should also learn, there is urgent need that today's young generation should learn all these things which are already there in our traditional values and culture. You may belong to any society, any caste, any culture. In every society certain things are there and all those traditional values are good not only for you, but you are securing your future generation also when you are suggesting your children, when you are suggesting your grandchildren that well I have used that and you just go through the different folk tales, you just go through different songs, different folk songs, you will find in different or different, different proverbs, different things, hearsay prevalent in your society. You will find different proverbs are there belonging to your society in your local language that just to suggest you to protect certain things related to environments. So, whether it is folk song whether it is uh, folk tale, whether it is other stories of Dada, Dadi and Nana, Nani, you will understand that well such good things are there in my culture and such good things are being studied by scholars. But what is the benefit of that? Well, for the sake of studying, they will study. But if we follow that, if we follow all those things, then we can improve our lives also. And in this context, here arises the importance of sociology of sanitation, that when we are learning through sociology of sanitation, of course at different level, we will learn at uh, efforts making at international level and other things also. But 
it will be better that if we make combination of these two that all those good things which we are having as part of our traditional system values, norms and patterns and then we get all those good things from our traditional values and any bad things are there we are supposed to discard those bad things and any good things are there from outside world we can also adjust ourselves because our area, our body, our mindset is framed by local area because we belong to particular area and even the animals and trees are uh, uh, rooted in uh, according to their geographical area. In our body also it is there. So, it suggests not only to protect the environment, protect the tree, protect the water, protect the other creatures who are interdependent. It is not like that when we are protecting tree, we are protecting ourselves. When we are protecting tree, we are protecting certain animals, certain uh, uh, different insects because we are interrelated. When we are facing problem, when we are trying to be modern, well being modern is not bad, we should, but we are supposed to being modern from our thought process also. It is not modernity does not mean simply ignoring the traditional things. There is one wonderful book in sociology written by uh, Yogendra Singh that is modernization of Indian tradition. In book he clearly suggests unlike normally it is understood that modernity and tradition these two are antonyms, these two are polar opposite things. Of course not, modernity and tradition in our sociological understanding it is not like that there is like either and or, you either opt for modernity or opt for tradition, of course not. We can take the modern things, but without uh, discarding the traditional thing. For example, take simple example, following Chhat Puja is uh, of course the traditional thing, but you might have noticed that these days instead of river, instead of pond, people celebrate even on the top floor or on even in the swimming pool. That is like that or we are performing any rituals in online mode or any other things. These are certain examples of that for being modern, you are not supposed to discard your traditional thing. You can be modern by following your traditional things equally. It is not like that you are supposed to discard. So, simple thing is that when you are following, you do promote. In that way, clearly in modernization of Indian tradition, Yogan Singh suggests that well in India different type of tradition go hand in hand. So, tradition may continue without compromising with modernity and modernity may continue without compromising with the tradition. These two things modernity and tradition may go hand in hand. In that particular way in sociology of sanitation point of view you can also take the same lessons as given by uh, Yogendra Singh in his book modernization of Indian tradition that being modern does not mean that discarding tradition. Same thing is there, our history, history provides us number of other things not only different lessons, different suggestions, but we are fortunate that nature gives us a lot. Now, it is our time that what nature gives number of things for us, can we do anything for nature and even in that our selfishness is there, if we protect the nature it is not like that only it will be better for the nature, but if we make our nature, make our surrounding clear, it will be better for our survival also. And you just try to understand there is interconnectedness between society, norms, culture, psychology, economy, number of other things. If we will protect our environment, if we will stay in healthy life, we will behave sanitation sensitive behavior in a particular way. It is not only that we will lead a healthy life, but it will minimize our cost in expending the money or doing expenditure on health related or different medicines. One point, another point is that if we relax in a particular way, we mentally feel free. That is why when we say that today it is very popular when we talk about the meditation, when we talk about yoga. It is not simply that we are saving money. Of course, if you do that 
maintain all these things, you can maintain your body and you can maintain the balance between mind, body and soul. So, in that particular way, we can lead a healthy life, one point. Another point is that we can also promote others that well, there is possibility of maintaining tradition at the same time you can go ahead with the modernity. So, tradition and modernity can go and hand in hand. In that particular way, we can take help from as we start our discussion with that, that book view and uh, textual view and contextual view. So, field view and book view can be helpful for us and understanding sociology of sanitation. And in book view, we can get a number of help from our Indological studies. A number of Indological studies suggest us a number of things related to sociology of sanitation. So, we can get help from Indological study aspects related to sociology of sanitation. At the same time, today we are staying in the society. When we are staying in our society, we can have our day to day life, we are having our personal life, the lifestyle. So, what we observe in our society in nearby areas, in other areas, we can get help from that. So, we can also have the field view, we can also have the contextual view and we can combine it with the textual view or Indological study. If we then start thinking regarding that, then we are thinking that well, through sociology of sanitation after mingling these two things book view and field view or textual view or contextual view, we can help the society, we can help the learners. So, that it is not only useful for particular branch called sociology of sanitation, but in that particular way we are doing the social service also, because we are helping others in that particular way. Dear learners, you can think that what we discussed during this lecture is not only useful for the next generation. So, you are helping yourself, you are helping your peer group, you are helping your next generation and for that you can get help from your seniors at family level, from your parents, from your grandparents and you should spread the message in your workplace or in your nearby areas. In that particular way, you will help the use of or the knowledge of sociology of sanitation to others. It is not like that we should wait for another uh, uh, form of the COVID that well, if any emergency will come, we will tackle, we will handle that. But if we will prepare ourselves, because we, our history has number of other things to give us. So, we should take help from the historical facts from the norms, patterns, values related to our community, related to our religion, related to our other cultural ethos and we will use that in any type of system, any type of problems which we may face. And in that particular way, the crux of this discussion is that there is interconnectedness between the historical facts, tradition, norms, patterns at the same time between healthy life natural environment and sustainability of the environment. And we are having a number of examples in our society, number of groups they stay in. For example, tribal people, they are closer to the nature, they are staying in mountain, they are staying in the forest areas, they are very closer to the nature. We should also protect them, we should also learn from their lifestyle that yes, we may learn through book and through article that particular plant, particular tree is useful for that particular thing. But without having that expert knowledge, without having that proper knowledge from other sources, they have been using that particular herbs, that particular medicine for their welfare. So, it is not like that for ex, uh, implementing those things our day to day life, we need the expert knowledge, we need particular type of borrowed knowledge, but as they are staying, they are happily live, leading their life by following their traditional culture. But do remember that does not mean that I am suggesting that we should stick to, we should go back to that period, of course not. What are those good things? We should take only those good things is there, because when for simple thing we take the filter, 
for getting pure water, we purify the water, we filter the water, same thing is there in the knowledge also. We should filter the knowledge, we should take the good from all the sides and it is said that uh, we should take lessons from everywhere, whether in that community that aspect is good, well we should take that. In, even in Ravindranath Tagore suggested that let noble thoughts come from all the sources. So, if anything we are is world because of the development of IT, it is not like the forms and patterns, but certain things are good in that certain things are good from that society we should take. So, just that in particular society they are they used to live happily follow, but if we start learning from other sources that things so come. And for that, uh, we are supposed to ourselves to particular study, particular community, particular. If in our society we will allow others, we will allow other thoughts to intervene, then we will learn that okay, it is good for our survival. It is not only good for our survival, but indirectly or directly, we are helping others also for their life. And when we say that helping others, it is not simply that we are talking about human being or the individual. There is close interconnectedness between survival of the animals, birds, plants, river, tree and of course, the human being. And you all will find number of differences between different parts of different Indian society. When we say that different parts of different Indian society, it means that number of other things are already there. When we say that number of other things are already there, it means we should take lessons from them and this, then we should implement that okay, all these things are good in that particular society and another things are not good in that particular society. So, we should also take lesson from that. In that particular way, we should learn that well, our forefathers used to take that lesson, whether cleaning with that or you all are aware with this, uh, the yagya performed at different places. And you all know that even today's scientists, they clearly say that, that the smoke out of the yagya that purifies the whole area for a longer period of time. So, just imagine the importance of yagya and havan. So, they were not having that type of today's so called scientific knowledge, but they were having more than that knowledge and which is being supposed to, which is being justified by and even they used to plant the particular tree and today scientifically we prove that yes, it will be helpful for our society. When we say such things, we should know that, we should take all those things and we are fortunate even then we can get others help also. So, not only you should take lessons from your society, all those good things you should take if possible to maintain that in today's society, you should maintain and while protecting, we should keep in mind that we should respect others culture, other norms and pattern because ultimately when we talk about environment, when we talk about sanitation, it is not limited to simply a particular society. You cannot feel relaxed if in a compartmentalized form you are there. For a few moments, for few years you may satisfy yourself, but for your longer survival, for sustainable development, your surroundings should also be in that particular way. When we think of Vasudhaya Kutumbakam as we discussed, when we are supposed to learn that the whole world, the whole universe is one family. It indirectly says that as you do care about your family, in the same way you should care about the whole universe. We try our best that yes, our society should be healthy, our society should be uh, fine enough. In the same way, you should also think that this whole universe should remain happy, healthy and other thing. In that particular way, we are supposed to remain, stay healthy and happy. So, dear learners, let me wrap up today's lecture. We started our discussion with the fact that we are having a number of things in our tradition, culture values, 
you may belong to any society, any community, any group, but you will find that in your society, your group, number of other good things are there, which you are supposed to follow in our day to day life. At the same time, you should also respect the norms, pattern, culture prevalent in other society. Do learn from their culture and pattern and with the examples given by different Manusmriti, Yajurved, etc. and the system prevalent during Chanakya's period. At the same time, we also discussed examples from Indus Valley civilization and the ruins of Nalanda. We find a number of other things. Same way, it is your task to find out the cultural traditions, the suggestions as part of your values, system, norms and patterns. Sometimes what happens, we are not even aware that well, these certain parts of our culture is related to sanitation. It is not like that, that it will be part of or someone will intentionally tell you that well, be aware, these things are related to that. Of course not. For example, when you start taking food, you wash your hands. It is not like that you start such habit only after the COVID-19, but number of other things are already there which we do, which we behave, which we think as part of our norms and patterns. So simply we have to make them ourselves aware that okay, these good things are there. It is our responsibility to protect our culture, to maintain our tradition at the same time to be proud of that yes, I belong to this culture, these good things are already there. When we say that we should follow the culture and tradition does not mean that we are suggesting that we should follow a number of other things which is not possible in today's life. Of course not. We all are mature enough, we can understand, we can think we all are rational being. We can think that certain things are good for our society, certain things are good for our culture, certain things are good for the survival of our society, the environment and other things. And that is why when we start thinking about that well these things are there, for that you are supposed to sit with your dada dadi and nana nani at the same time when you learn that these good things are there or when you praise any nature, you just try to understand that that is the creature of the God. The precautionary warning is that your any system, your any cultural traits, your any other suggestions should not be detrimental to either environment or other side of the people. You are supposed to not only maintain sanitation in your area, your culture, but such values should also be spread in the nearby areas also, because ultimately this whole world is there. If the whole world will remain happy, only then you can think of that well, yes, I can stay healthy life, I can stay satisfactory life and it will give you the satisfaction beyond that simple thing. So think from that angle and in that particular way, this is all about today's lecture and prepared a list of some important books and articles related to today's lecture. And there is suggested readings and I have also taken help from these materials, these books. You should also go through these books if you get an opportunity to go through and these books will be helpful for you in preparing yourself at the same time. Other than that, you can contact, you can consult the norms, patterns related number of books that you will find in your area. So in your area, in your local language, your words, you will also find. These are certain books which are typically related to sociology of sanitation that is related to historical aspect of it. And for that, you may consult the books like Hans, he has written one book on culture of sanitation from Indus Valley civilization to Sulav. Another book written by Hetkar Jha, Sanitation in India, a Historico-Sociological Survey. Another book by B.K. Nagla, Sociology of Sanitation. Another book by B.K. Nagla, Problems of Sanitation in India, Does Culture Matter? Richard Pius, another book by Richard Pius, Sociology of Sanitation. Another book, edited book by Bindeswar Pathak, Sociology of Sanitation 
environmental sanitation, public health and social deprivation. Another book by Ashish Saxena, Sociology of Sanitation. Another book by Anil Vaghela, Sociology of Sanitation. You are supposed to get help from these books and above all on such issues you should go through these books, but you are supposed to imbibe all those person in your personality traits, so that not only you will learn, but you will spread the message in your surroundings and your near and dear ones will get the benefit of all that. So, in this way, this is all about the second lecture, sanitation in India, historical aspect and next in third lecture, we will discuss certain issues related to caste and sanitation that will be focused on that how is caste related to sanitation. Thanks a lot for your presence hearing. Thank you. Hi, I am Chitwan Lalji, a PhD student of Health Economics under the supervision of Dr. Debian Pakrashi uh, from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. In one of my essays, I am interested in understanding the relationship between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. Health indicators, both subjective and objective health indicators like mental health, self-assessed health, various measures of blood pressure and various measures of cholesterol. Uh, measures of blood pressure like systolic and diastolic BP, you have your incidence of high BP, MAP and incidence of high MAP. And as far as cholesterol is concerned, I have tried to concentrate more on total cholesterol, good cholesterol and incidence of high cholesterol. Now before I go on to what have been my major contributions and various policy implications, I would like to briefly tell you about the policy initiatives of WHO and various countries. The WHO, that is the World Health Organization, it started with a campaign of five a day. That is, you should have five portions of fruits and vegetables per day. That would be approximately, you could say, 400 grams of fruits and vegetables. Now, a portion, before we go further, I'll just tell you what exactly is a portion. One portion is equivalent to a medium-sized apple or one small glass of fruit juice, which is approximately 150 milliliters and uh, maybe three teaspoons of vegetables. So, uh, the WHO went with a five a day campaign, which was further taken up by various countries. Countries like UK, Netherlands, Germany, Norway, they adopted the five a day policy, while some went for expansionary dietary policies like France, Australia, Canada, Denmark. So, for example, Australia, it went for go for two plus five policy in which it said that you should consume five por two portions of fruits and five portions of vegetables per day. And USA went for a policy of fruits and vegetables, more matters. That is, you must consume more and more fruits and vegetables. Now, irrespective of these expansionary dietary policies and dietary propagations, it has been found that only 28 percent of women and 25 percent of men they actually meet the recommended dietary norms of five a, po five a day portion. So, the major contribution of my work is firstly to find an association between fruits and vegetables, whether there exists a relationship between fruits and vegetables and health indicators and if they exist, whether if due to heterogeneity in the data, so I will be doing it according to age, by gender and by uh, your weight. So, apart from that, I will go for policy recommendations in which I will, I am basically studying uh, how much fruits and vegetables matter, apart from that, which type matters more. So, for that, I have taken data from the Health Survey of England. Health Survey of England is an annual survey which takes uh, data, which conducts information regularly on demographic and socioeconomic characteristics. You have your lifestyle behaviors like 
an individual smokes or doesn't smoke, alcohol consumption, you have your sedentary and physical activities and you have various health uh, indicators also which have been collected. Uh, so, uh, before I go on to what exactly is my research, I would like to concentrate more on fruits and vegetables like what kind of questions were asked in the survey. Questions like what kind of fresh fruit do you eat? Did you eat any dried fruit yesterday? Don't count dried fruits in cereals, cakes. Apart from that, for vegetables, they asked how many tablespoons of vegetables did you eat yesterday? 